cry? No. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. That is what you normally think when you think of women's baseball. That is because the sport was popularized by the 1992 film A League of Their Own. The real story began in 1941 in the midst of World War II. Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Empire of Japan on December 7, 1941. World War II had officially started for the United States and devastated many, and people's favorite minor league players went off to fight in one of the largest war in history. By the autumn of 1942, many of the leagues disbanded so the men could go and fight in World War II. The United States had fought alongside the United Kingdom, France, and the Soviet Union to take down Adolf Hitler's army and the rest of the Axis powers. The Allies eventually won four years later. The consequences of that war were numerous. About 17 million soldiers had died in the process, but one man changed life outside the war forever. That man's name was Philip K. Wrigley. He was the owner of the Chicago Cubs and a bubblegum legend. He had come up with the AAGPBL which stands for All-American Girls Baseball League. The organization had many names throughout the years. The original name was proposed in early 1943 was the AAGSBL, which stands for the All-American Girls Softball League. Their nickname was the Lipstick League. Later the same year, the name changed to AGBL, which stood for American Girls Baseball League. Around the 1980s, the former players of the AGBL changed it to AAGPBL, which is what it's called today. Wrigley came up with this idea for four main reasons. The first one was to keep ballparks across America making profit. The second reason was to motivate women and girls to exercise and for needed recreation. The third was that it would give small cities a chance to participate in recreational activities. This was because back in the 1940s, a lot of sports were in the big cities. The fourth and final reason was to provide healthy spectator recreation for the war workers. The people in America wanted this because they wanted a way to escape their worries. Americans were looking for a way to escape the daily worries of rations, factory work, so recreation was needed. People also wanted this because the AGBL would be supporting the war effort. The way they would support the war effort was by making a V formation for victory as the national anthem played. I love forming the V on the field from home plate while they played the national anthem and then announced each one of us playing, said Tony Lermo, a former AAGPBL player. There are many complications regarding the development of the AGBL. Biggest challenge was that Mr. Wrigley faced was finding businessmen in nearby cities who would be willing to pay for and host the teams. Another complication with the development of the AGBL was that they had trouble finding Major League Baseball team owners to lead the teams. Eventually, in the end, Mr. Wrigley, Mr. Branch Rickey, a sports executive, and Mr. Paul Harper, the Cubs attorney, agreed, and the idea was born to have women play baseball. More than 500 women showed up to Wrigley Field in Chicago to play the sport they loved and try out for the league. The women were separated into 15 teams. The AGBL lasted longer than anticipated because they heavily leaned on the girls' skill. The AGBL helped the fans rise in the ballpark because in 1948, the ballpark hit 1 million fans watching the women's sport. Mary Pratt, a Rockford Peach, said, We did help to fill a void. That is exactly what they did. The women also had to live life outside the war. The league had to be American girls, and with that, the league had to attend nightly charm classes at Helena Rubenstein's beauty salon. We looked like girls but played like men, said Viola Thompson, a former AAGPBL player. This was the reason why they attended night school. They also had to wear uniforms, but these were your typical uniforms. The women couldn't wear the original baseball pants and jersey. They didn't wear the original because the women would be seen as too masculine. Instead, the women had to wear a one-piece skirted tunic with knee-high socks. The effect of this outfit choice resulted in the women getting strawberries, which were really bad dirt burns when they slid. The most significant event in the time of the league was the World Series. My family stopped and listened said my great-grandfather, Leo Wilmus. There were multiple teams that won the World Series throughout the years. The Racine Bells had won in 1943 and 1946, and the Milwaukee Chicks in 1944. The most successful team was the Rockford Peaches.
A few years after World War II, attendance skyrocketed. The highest attendance was in 1948 when 10 teams attracted 910,000 paying fans. But as the years progressed, the attendance lacked. The one thing that made the league fall apart was the decentralization of the league. Instead of one central power, the league split into multiple individual powered teams. By the end of the 1950 season, the league team directors voted to purchase the AAGPBL from Arthur Mayerhoff and operate their teams independently. Max Carey then resigned as league president and was replaced by Fred Leo, his assistant. With no central control, the league began to break down and ended in 1954. The league's ending was sad, but they did not stop. In 1946 through 1956, an all-star team comprised of former AAGPBL players went around the country to showcase their talents. The league also left its mark by the 1992 movie A League of Their Own. Today, the women's daughters and granddaughters play the sport their parents and grandparents played years ago a few weekends of summer. They meet anywhere just as long as there is dirt in the skirt. Recently, the ladies celebrated the 75th anniversary of the AAGPBL. They celebrated it by doing a meet and greet in Kansas City, Missouri. They met a multitude of their fans and got to talk to them. They also were able to catch up with each other. Tony Blairmo, a player of the Chicago Colleens in 1949 through half of the 1950s, and a Springfield Sally the rest of the 1950s season said, I loved everything about the game, the strategy of the game, facing different pitchers, getting on base, stealing bases, making double plays, fielding grounders, fly balls, line drives, getting the batter out, and lastly winning the game. These women played across the United States to entertain Americans. This was a triumph from the tragedy. The women got to play a sport they loved and entertained Americans. The women showed that triumphs could come from tragedy. Approximately 67 million people died in World War II, the war that changed history forever, not just politically, but socially as well. Women playing in professional baseball sought to improve the lives of of women in the early 1900s. Women participating in baseball helped continue the gains made by the women's rights movement. It also gave a great deal of respect to American women's sports. It changed the occupation of women. Along with the skill set the women had, they had the opportunity to attend a higher education. It left each player with a lifelong friendship with their fellow players. It also created a way for Americans to follow, a chance for female athletes to follow in their footsteps. In conclusion, as the sports in the United States began to fall apart because of the men leaving the war, the women saved the day and played baseball. Play ball! We're the members of the All-American League. We come from